there are moments, you know, I'm sure when people are just on the floor and they're like, damn, this smell of feet and dog hair makes me fucking <laughs> horny. So. And there I was on the floor and I was just like, how did I get here? Welcome back one and all. Thank you for listening. If you're new here, this is the Totally Wholesome, Not Dirty podcast, and I'm your host, Molly Stewart. We define wholesome a little differently here, and my guests span everywhere from the adult industry to the vanilla side of humanity. If you haven't, please consider subscribing. Word of mouth is what helps this podcast grow. So share with a friend, leave a comment, download an episode, or anything you can to help with the algorithm. I release episodes every Monday. And if you're subscribed, you'll never miss an episode. You don't want to miss out on all the crazy conversations that evolve here. Um, but that's enough for me, and let's get to today's guest. But anyway, returning guests, we have Katie Cush. So Hi. Katie, thank you for being here today. Oh, thanks for having me. So Katie was one of the very first guests of the podcast, actually, before there was any real setup or anything at all. And now we're coming up on a year so that's really really exciting what a great circle yeah it's been it's been really fun so i'm sure that everybody is curious what you've been up to in that time because i feel like so much has changed since then because at that time we were still kind of on a little bit of a lockdown type thing we're not quite locked down but where people were still kind of eh, about stuff like the testing was still crazy for scenes Mm -hmm. and all of that kind of stuff um, I think we were also talking on the last one about like me thinking about featuring. Yeah, possibly featuring. So a lot has changed. I do a, three different things. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Obviously, I have like the OnlyFans site still, and then I'm doing film still, and then yes, I did start actually featuring. So I've been doing That's that, awesome. that quite often. So what does that what does that entail? Because it's not something that I've done or probably will ever do. So tell me about <laughs> yeah, it. <that's, laughs> I think we use that last time too. Um, <laughs> Um, sometimes it's a lot of work. I mean, it is a lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> it entails leaving on like sometimes a Thursday and then getting in and doing a show that night, oh, wow. maybe like midnightish, and then that's crazy. The next morning, you're kind of doing whatever you want until you want to go in and do your two shows, and you just get on stage, dance it up. Yeah. I love it because I, I mean, I do love it because I'm selling merch. Yeah. So that's getting out there. What I've, kind of merch do you have? Um, I have some shirts. And then, oh, yeah, I opened up an actual merch store also. Oh, since. that's cool. Yeah, I opened it. It's Chris with a Z dot com. That's awesome. <laughs> Check it out. <laughs> yeah, so I met this guy that started doing merch. So we started doing that. Um, this a fan of mine was really sweet when I first started, and he got me DVDs. So I've been selling, like, DVDs. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. That's awesome. One. Shout out. That's really cool. <laughs> um, Look at you making all these money moves. Yeah, it's just fun. It's fun to get my name out there. I feel like the promo is really good mm-hmm. um, on that sense. So it's fun. It can be a fun Oh, though. Look at these honies, girl. Oh, man. A car- one of the, all the stages are so different. I think that's one of my favorite parts about it is mm-hmm. every club you go into is so different. People are different. The culture yeah. of the state is different, or just that I've been to Michigan three times, Detroit, Flint, and Lansing. Yeah. They've been all so different. And I'm yeah. like, that's crazy. Do you have, like, a favorite place that you featured before? Definitely. Uh, it's so random. Definitely um, Detroit, Michigan was probably one of my favorites. It was yeah. the nicest looking club, super set up cool. Um, New York was kind of cool. It was a nice looking club, but it was, like, during December. Yeah. When COVID was still really, really weird. Mm. And so it was kind of not what I expected as a New York place, you know. Yeah. But yeah, San Francisco was sick, but that's what did this to my no- my knees. They have carpet stages. Oh my God, that sounds horrible for like, dancing. I was like, why? And, and the manager kept trying to warn me and he was like, oh, but it's better because then no bruises. And I was like, I think I would choose bruises over, over rug burn. Rug burn, rug burn is worse. Like I, bruises, who cares? You can touch them up with makeup. You can't yeah. even touch up rug burn with makeup. No. As someone who falls very frequently <laughs> <I'm>, and has <laughs> corgis, like they're just little barrels, like cannonballs with legs that just like barrel into me at all times. I'm always bruised, always scratched. But when I fall on carpet, it is the worst thing. It's like, um, I... I've had a bit of road rash before, Oof. which is kind of like not way worse than not, carpet burn, girl. <laughs> not much, but that's what it reminds me of. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, and you can't cover it up because every little bit gets like scabby and flaky. Dude, and I, like, 
to I do. put liquid bandage. Have you heard of liquid bandage on there? Liquid bandage. It's like uh, you can, instead of a bandage, you literally are putting like an oil over your skin and it just hardens over it. And it oh, really? Does it just bandage. like peel off or something? Uh-huh, or it'll get scabby like it. Oh. But I did that for a scene and I did a couple of layers and they put makeup on it. Oh, uh, did it just like crack? <laughs> it started, yeah, it started cracking. It like peeled off the leather. <laughs> it was f***ing gross. I was like, wait, cut, guys. I got to go rebandage my knee. And go oh, right my back. God. Yeah, this has been on my knees for like months. It's been at least a month and Ugh. a half. Bruises would have been gone a long time ago. That's why I like never like f*** on carpet is the worst. Oh, yeah. Like it's not, <laughs> it's not fun. It's like sometimes you need like the padding or whatever, but I recommend like a yoga mat. Like I recommend <laughs> if you have to do it on the carpet, I if recommend you have to, if you have to fuck on the ground, if you absolutely <laughs> must have sex on the ground, I recommend a yoga mat, maybe a towel, just like maybe a pillow. Get a pillow. big f- cushion for your Definitely. floor. Like, but don't <laughs> don't try it on carpet. Why Even, do people like to choose the floor first of all? <laughs> First of all, it's dirty. Like, this is something like... <laughs> no matter where you at, it's gross. <laughs> and I do... <laughs> like, this is what we do for work. So, it, like, it, it, and it's like, there are different scene scenarios. And of course, there are moments, you know, I'm sure when people are just on the floor and they're like, damn, this smell of feet and dog hair <laughs> makes me <laughs> horny. So. <laughs> and there I was on the floor and I was just like, how did I get here on this dirty floor? <laughs> Yep, that's me. You might be wondering <laughs> how I got here. Yeah. I but did, like, like, dude, I, so, just a slight segue. I think that on anal days when I'm cleaning out, I'm like, turn around, I'm like, where the how the fuck? <laughs> like, it's so okay. So, like, I am so obsessed because of the content that I make and because I make it from my home. Yeah, that it's like. I'm obsessed with everything being clean yeah. because it's like you have to make content everywhere yeah. because everybody has like a different fantasy or a different way they want to see you. And then honestly, let's be real for every hot girl. There's a guy who's sick of f-ing her. So <laughs> it's like you have to keep it engaging. Do you know what I mean? And yes. it's not like they've f-ed us, but they've jerked off to us. They're like, they, I've seen you in that corner. I need you like, to go somewhere You've been else. <laughs> doing this for almost a decade. Yeah. I've seen your boobs. Like, I'm not impressed. Yeah. So I'm like, maybe I'll get muscles instead. We'll try something new. But like, you have to keep doing stuff and different things all the time. So my floors are f-ing immaculate. I keep like, <laughs> I keep like carpet spray like around at all times. I'll be vacuuming like every two days because I have Clorox three wipe dogs on every in corner. Here. There really is. <laughs> like around. I'm so prepared. I'm like, all right, I gotta be doing stuff on the countertops in the kitchen today. I'm take the Lysol wipes and just make sure it's all you know kosher don't want to be sitting in the chicken juices and stuff so <laughs> getting those chicken cutlets what is it? what's like the weirdest place that you've had <laughs> had sex for a scene oh for a scene that's a good one definitely um anytime it needs to be in a washer or <laughs> i had to be stuck in a cushion once and that's just the weirdest how does, how does the washer thing work so because it's like you don't even get to see your face at all or do they like cut out the back of the washer and then they film you through sometimes they way. put gopros in there to like get it i think it just makes it so wide though. does but it yeah yeah weird. the wide angle is kind of it feels like it would make everything look kind of weird and skewed definitely the weirdest place i've ever yeah the washers will have to be one Kitchens will always make me mad because let's go back to the floor talk because I was in a kitchen one and it had an island and I was like, look at all these positions. Yeah. Mish on the counter. Yeah. Mish on your knees. Why are they like, no, we want it all on the floor. You're going to do it right here on the floor instead. Yeah. We'll show this perfect f***able island. But Why you're going to be they on use the- it? Don't know. I- they were like, we're doing it on the floor. I've used my island. <laughs> I've used many <laughs> islands. Like, yeah. so you, you have to. Like, that's, I don't know. That's kind of weird. Let's see yeah. switch around. So I know that's not a weird place, but it's just a weird scenario considering that it, it could have been so nice for me. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, no, I'm just on the floor. <laughs> like, we don't want to make it nice for you. And no, you know what's so. funny, too, is some shoot houses are, like, so dirty. It upsets me so much. Like, you'll walk two steps <clears throat> and your feet will be black. Uh-huh. I think I set my water down somewhere. Right there. All right. 
But yeah, I've been to shoe houses like that. And then it's like you have to keep the baby wipes on hand to like wipe down the bottoms of your feet. And it's like, why don't you just clean the floors? Like, I don't understand. Like, I do not get gross feet walking around my floors. And I have three dogs. I'm here all the time. <laughs> like, and if it's a shoot house, typically they have someone cleaning it. So who's yeah, your so cleaning who's... lady? <laughs> Fire them. They're, they're, they're not good. doing their job. They're not like, doing well. Not doing hot. They're not doing okay. <laughs> <laughs> so they're just they're just using the pool at the shoot house they're just, they're just <laughs> yeah <laughs> they run a vacuum of or something like a feather duster that just throws you know the dust around i've like looked at the baseboards in some shoot houses and i'm like ah. <laughs> why don't people clean their why do people think it's weird when you clean your baseboards i don't get it it's been a really hot topic in my life okay like basement basement talk board to me about this <laughs> because I have four different areas that have cleaning supplies <laughs> on hand at all times so I can keep everything spotless. If I start to see dust along the baseboards, no, you wipe it down. Even <clears> if it's that's I think, filled up. I think that's called spring cleaning or maybe maybe every couple of months. But people will be like, oh, you, why are you cleaning your baseboards? And I'm like, well, do you not see the filth? Yeah. Do you not the see grime? what's there? Like, do you see that by the door right now? I see that and it bothers me. <laughs> and I don't know how I'm just noticing it now. It must be a recent thing. My dogs are filthy. Dogs are hard to keep clean. They're after. hard. They get those bones. And then I have white surfaces in my house, like the ones that have like the meat bits on them. Mm. <clears throat> and I get it off the floors, but then I'll notice like a streak on the wall. And I'm like, <laughs> how did that get there? <laughs> I just lick it. My cat's a filthy, filthy eater too. She makes a mess mm. all straight, all around it. And she has that, like, cat thing. So, yeah, she's a mess, too. So, I feel like mm. I'm constantly cleaning. Yeah. The, my oldest dog, <laughs> he likes to take the food that you put in the nice, clean bowl. Because I clean their bowls <laughs> every day. Like, He's very and in a nice little container, too. He takes his nose and he flicks the edge of it until he flips it all over the floor. <laughs> and then he'll slowly eat it, like, one piece at a time off the floor. Like, meanwhile, spreading it around and licking all over the floor. <laughs> just cleaning. I'm like, dude, what are we doing? They're like toddlers. Oh but worse yeah yeah i don't know why that's been a hot topic in my life but a lot of people me and a lot of adults have been talking about the cleanliness of our yeah i don't think it's that hard okay so fans. here's the question the people that don't clean are they are they industry as well um yeah most of these people i'm talking to are but they're funny because they're like i clean everything but i'll never you'll never see me like going around hands and knees on my baseboards i'm like there will be times where i'm on high hands and knees clorox wiping the whole bathroom floor just because yes. i feel like it needs Yes, like I have. All right, I'm gonna introduce you to some stuff because we're gonna have to have a talk later about cleaning supplies. Because I'm so excited right now. I get weird organizing stuff too. Oh my God, Storage I love bins. It. Don't give me. Is that started. like a mental health thing? Like, I think about it like, a lot. Is it because we? It's the only real thing we can control. Yeah. So we make the, the house well. like I. I don't know. Like I get really invested in these like organization videos that are like, look at these different crates and stuff for your cabinets that you didn't know existed that you now need to organize all of your teas and mm -hmm. you're like this and that. I have them like in my fridge, yeah. and it's just like if I get stressed out, I start organizing even more than it's already organized, oh, for sure. and then it's like. But then I also kind of find that because I'm so busy, once I get to the point of a certain organization, it's like, well, I know where everything is. So it makes everything else more efficient. But the amount of time that I spend on getting it to like that organized point or then being like, all right, this doesn't suit me anymore. I'm going to totally reorganize. This. Same. And I think about it a lot when I'm organizing. I'm like, oh, yeah, I can see it in my brain the way I want it. Yeah. And then I get all the items to organize and then mm -hmm. I go to do it. And I'm like, well, shit, <laughs> now I have to actually do that. Yeah. <laughs> the cleaning of, because I just recently got storage containers for all of my pantry food. Because mm -hmm. the bags were starting to drive me insane in there. All yeah. the different baggies or whatever. Yeah. And snacks. So I was like, let's clean it up. I got all those storage containers and I was like, oh, we've got to like wash all those first. <laughs> Yeah. That was a lot, but I finally got it done. But it's nice to see it once it's <clears> done. I'm like, wow, I'm an adult. I'm like, look what I did. <laughs> now what else can I procrastinate what's, with? Yeah, <laughs> what's the, next, what's the <laughs> next big project I can give myself <laughs> that'll take at least five months? <laughs> so, so I'm setting up like a new um, office and podcast space for the new year coming up. And... I keep putting off all this editing I have to do because I'm like, I know once I get this office podcast space set up, I'm going to be so efficient. There's going to be no distractions from like what I have to do. And so 
I'm just going to keep working on this <laughs> and putting off other stuff. And I really need to buckle down and do it. But it's so hard. My brain is all over the place. Like It's like false. I do the same thing. When mm. it came to me, like starting my, started doing Pilates and stuff, mm-hmm. <laughs> it came to me doing it. First, I had to get, my, I was like, first, I need an area to set up with a mat. And it has to feel zen. Yeah. <laughs> and, or I will not be able to complete said task. <laughs> but then once it's set up, I can do the Pilates. <laughs> it, just, like, it takes a minute. We're like really or like unorganized, organized people. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Love the organization, but it takes us a minute to get there. But it's like, I, I make an art out of it. Like I've said this before, like, what is my house? Like, why does it look like good housekeeping could just come over and be like, <laughs> like quick, easy. It's so unnecessary. Yeah. But I'm like, if stuff is too messy or whatever, then that's all I can think about. And then I can't get the other stuff done. So it's like, well, then I'll take all this time to clean it. And Mm -hmm. meanwhile, also getting distracted by work I have to do in between that. So then it takes like 10 times as long. Yeah. And I'm like, what am I doing? I do the same thing. I'll wake up, be like, today's a work day. We're getting this content done. But this house, but first I gotta clean. <laughs> gotta clean this whole house, and then I'm like on the other side. I'm like, but wait, you're just gonna remess it up with the content, <laughs> so you might as well keep it dirty. <laughs> My brain's like, you can't get shit done. But you can't. It's clean. But you can't shoot in a <laughs> yeah. dirty counter house. Exactly. <laughs> like we just had this discussion. It's a never ending cycle. And I had a friend come over too and be like, why? How do you know where everything is? Why does everything have a place? And I'm like, I've just lived long enough, I think, alone yeah. to get frustrated at myself every time I can't find my thing in that place. Yeah, and it and it does make things in a way like more convenient, like when you are in the headspace to work and get things done. Like that's why I try to do stuff like we have coming up, like planning a shoot with Laura. So it's like, well, here's something that I'm already obligated to do, mm-hmm. essentially, mm-hmm. you know. Not like you have to do this, right. but you, but you kind of do because you're obligated to other people or whatever. Right. So you're kind of held accountable. So that's kind of why I book stuff like that. Because then I'm like, oh, well, I can spend the whole day before preparing the house. Mm-hmm. So that can take up all my time. And then the next day we'll actually have to buckle down and do it. <laughs> that's funny how the adulting works. Like you got to plan out your day. Oop, I can break up the cleaning and the content day into two days. That's yeah. part, of, part of my seven days. <laughs> the next day. And the next day I'm going to have to clean what I could have cleaned before I went to bed, <laughs> but, but I, I didn't. Why not so. hold it off to the next day? <laughs> That is so funny. Okay, we're not alone. Unite. <laughs> Organized procrastinators. I it so much. But I feel like I also, it's like, I somehow get so much done. Maybe it's just, though, that, because we do get a lot done, obviously, mm-hmm. but there's always more to do. And I think that that's what's overwhelming, especially in a job like this, is that it's not like you have a big project to do, right, that you have to get done. And then you have, like, some downtime. It's always, like, you always have to have a new project. You Mm -hmm. always have to have the new content. And it's, like, you are expected to be on all the time, especially when we're messaging with fans or even just interacting with social media content and deciding what to post and and all that. Like, it sounds kind of silly, I'm sure, to anyone who isn't in it. But when people are watching you for entertainment, like, that's essentially what they're paying for, adult entertainment or not. They're coming there to be entertained. So they want to be having a good time. Mm -hmm. So you have to be having a good time because Mm -hmm. you have to be giving them a good time. (laughs) So so it's like you do have to be on all the time and that's very exhausting. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, it's not like you can just, um, oh my God. Laura, is the desert hot? (laughs) As hell. As hell. So may... Some may feel run down in the heat of summer. Do you ever feel run down? Yeah, every day. Do you ever feel like you just don't want to get out of bed? <laughs> I mean, shit, sometimes. Like, it's difficult. It's, t- it's that hot. You stopped, You're miserable. You, you stopped drinking coffee. Laura, where will you get your energy? <laughs> How will you keep your skin? <laughs> it's been hard. How will you it's keep your been- skin so dewy it's, and beautiful? It's hard. It's really hard. It's hard. I got to drink a lot of water. You have to drink so much water and then you have to pee always. all the time. I'm running to the bathroom like constantly. All the time. Yeah. You're always peeing. <laughs> but you never feel fully hydrated. Never. <sighs> With this heat, how can you like I mean, you how, suck. Do, how do you do it, Laura? <laughs> I have good news for you. Did you know that one sick of liquid IV when dissolved in 16 ounces of water? Hydrates better and faster than water alone. Damn. 
Would you like to try some liquid IV? I would, actually. Which flavor would you like? They have provided us pina colada. Ooh! They have golden cherry. Highly recommend one of my personal favorites. That sounds good. They have acai berry. Um, and also passion fruit, which I have already begun using. <laughs> as well as the golden cherry. Damn! Uh, let's do the golden cherry. That sounds let's really good. Open the package, Laura. <gasps> Do you like da, the packaging? Da, da, da. It, I love it. This it's is really my cool. favorite color. I really like it. This is great. I mean, and it's slim, so you mm -hmm. can stack your you can cabinets. Just slide it right in. <laughs> <laughs> slide it right in with liquid IV. All right, let's do this. I mean, don't. I mean, I don't know. All right. <laughs> so the whole thing, right? right? Yeah, the whole thing. Yeah. And luckily for us, I have a spoon. So that, <laughs> Lucky, luckily, what I prefer to do is to put it in my blender bottle and just, mm, that's how I start my mornings actually, because I am always dehydrated. Mm, I do it before I even have my coffee in the morning. True story. Literally every morning here in Vegas, especially during the summer. So Laura, let me know what you think of golden cherry. Oh, nice. It's become my personal favorite. Thanks. Cheers, everyone. Dude, I that know. is good. That is really good. And it's not sweet, like, but it has a good flavor. You mm -hmm. could definitely taste the cherry in that. Like, mm -hmm. that's so good. So highly recommend Golden Cherry. Delicious. Now, if you guys go to liquidiv.com and use code TWND at checkout, um, you will save... You, you will save... You will save. You will save so much that you're not even going to believe how much you can save. You get 25% off. Whoa. Actually, that's generous. 25% off when you use code TWND at checkout. David, sorry for earlier reads. I thought it was 20, but apparently you save even more. Yes. If that's you good. are not drinking liquid IV, you might be dehydrated. You might be. You'll never know unless you try. <laughs> so, Laura, can we tell them a little bit more about Liquid IV? Yeah, I would love to. I, I mean, mean, you'd never heard of it before, but um, <laughs> you just have these cards here that are just so useful for our visual uh, viewers. So, Liquid IV has three times the electrolytes of traditional sports drinks, which is just poof, electrolytes. It's what plants crave. All right. Yep. What else? <laughs> Vitamins. B3, B5, B6, B12, all of the best Bs, and vitamin C, which you need because people be getting sick. So don't get don't get sick. Use vitamins. Yeah. I mean, yes. you might still get sick, but you might get sick less. You might. All right. It's non-GMO. It's free from gluten. Oh, gluten's so scary. Dairy, which is fantastic because why would you mix dairy? <laughs> With water. With <laughs> water. <laughs> It's also great for those who are lactose intolerant like me. And, you know, you can confidently say that the dairy that is lacking from liquid IV sticks is just tremendously saving for your butthole. And I know that you guys relate. Liquid IV has also donated. They are trying to change the world, guys. They're trying to change the world. They're trying to hydrate yes. the world. Yes. They have donated over 20 million servings globally. That's like so many more than 2 million. We love so you. So many more. It's 20 million. That's crazy. So thank you, Liquid IV. If you guys want to experience better hydration today, then you should go to liquidiv.com and use code TWND at checkout to, um, to save 25% on anything that you buy at liquidiv.com. We thank Liquid IV for liking me and sending liquid ivy because i love this stuff it's bomb thank you all right back to back to the back to the show <laughs> <coughs> it was a really inopportune moment <clears throat> you always have to be creating new content because there's always more fans there's always new people and then there's always old fans who've known you for so long that they at least think or feel that they have already consumed all of your content. So they want what's new now. Then you have new people who they want to see all your older stuff. So it's this constant mm. cycle of <laughs> rotating content and you're just never done with it. It's yeah. not like you reach a point where you're like, oh, I can fully relax now. It's like mm -hmm. that's kind of what vacations are for. But even on vacations, 
I'm they so, want to see what we're doing uh-huh. and you're still working. It's all the time. Uh-huh. I've been at my sister's house and she'll be like, why are you, are you already working on your phone? You just opened your eyes. And I'm like, well, duh. Like, the yeah, people are like that's what I have time. to do. Yeah, people are up at all hours of the day. Like, <laughs> like, and it's one of those things too, where it's like, you have, a, you do have a limited amount of time, however limited that is. Like you can't extend it for a long amount of time, but eventually people won't want it as mm-hmm. much or even as frequently or whatever. So it's kind of like you do have a limit of time to kind of like push yourself and your fan base and your brand as far as it can go. So it is a constant hustle all the time. And it is a running a small business because mm-hmm. you have so many different, you know, eggs and baskets or whatever, you know, people say, mm-hmm. especially like you have your featuring. Mm-hmm. You also have a making adult content. You also have shooting mainstream. You also have merch. And so it's like you're you're like that. Yeah. That's what and I mean that's what they say, right? That's how you become the someone who makes more money. You have to have all these eggs in a basket, right? Multiple sources of income. Mm-hmm. But it, it it is frustrating also because it's not just about the things that make us money. Promos always what's the next way I'm gonna make promo? What's a new way I can like put myself what's the next platform? to put myself on what's yeah or like what's this? backup platforms for mm-hmm. things like you know with only fans happening it's like exactly. you can't have it all in one place and if you're actually going to like continue with this and make this a career and stuff like that you have to be working mm-hmm. as much as you possibly can stand it's like you do have to take time for yourself mm-hmm. but um it is like it is a constant hustle yeah yeah once i think i'm caught up i'm like yes i got everything done i'm all caught up the next day just like you said the next day comes and you're like now i'm behind again yeah i thought i was enough i would try to like do enough content to be stacked yeah. up for a couple of days at most yeah. maybe but yeah even on vacation i try to i try to compartmentalize it by being like all right the first couple hours you know phone is out you're allowed to be taking photos get what you think you need better make it good better get it good because then your phone's away and you're done yeah unless i like get bored or i'm like okay i'm not doing anything you know the next thing i can do is whatever make some content but yeah yeah i try to space it out in the in the amount of time that we give ourselves or whatever Mm -hmm. yeah for sure i completely agree it's something like like why i do all the cleaning and stuff like that because like Mm -hmm. for the most part and everybody knows this like i am always home like i'm just home Mm -hmm. (laughs) i'm old i stay home (laughs) i make content (laughs) i do a podcast like i i'm you know working on all these platforms there's so many different like you know ways to use my time so I am here all the time and if it's not a comfortable space then it's like how how will you get anything Anything done or you won't want to be there you won't want to be invested in what you're doing so that's why I set this up to do like you know shoots and stuff like that and just make it comfortable for everyone it's why there's like douches and butt wipes everywhere like all over the (laughs) house like Anywhere you look, whatever you need. Whatever you need. I got like hair ties <laughs> everywhere. Like. I love people that are like that. Some people in the industry are like, <laughs> I don't want to quote it because I'm not dying. <laughs> but they like, don't forget your own douche. Like, we don't have your douches on set. Oh my gosh. Bring them, bring them yourself. I try yeah. to try to make sure I have all the things that I need so I make myself comfortable because some people don't yeah. care. So it's nice when yeah, people care. No. Well, yeah, it's because I've been in situations <laughs> like that too. So now I'm like, if I have girls over to like my house to shoot content, I want to make sure that they're comfortable. Like yeah. use the showers. Like they all have the shampoos, all the things. Like, you know, some people want to shower right after or before or whatever or before and after. Like people be douching, you know, you need butt wipes. You need extra razors. Like yeah. because sometimes you just forget like one time I shaved my legs in the morning I was very tired and I left a giant strip of hair like all the way up one part of my fucking leg and there was no razors on set so it's like well, what do you do yeah. fuzzy strip you just have to apologize I'm, I'm just like so I'm sorry, sorry that you're gonna feel so much pleasure yeah. from the butterfly <laughs> kisses that my leg is gonna be giving your body I was going for a new look and I I do agree it doesn't fit I call it a leg hawk <laughs> What are they? <laughs> it's the Molly Stewart pinstripe, you know? <laughs> Pinstripes are slimming. <laughs> it's a contour. He's been contoured contour all the right places. Line. That's what show my, my nice abductor line. <laughs> trend center. She's a trend center. <laughs> That's yummy. Oh, fuck. <laughs> so Jesus yummy. Christ. <laughs> oh, my God. It's so funny. Like, do you ever like okay i'm sure you don't because you're so cute and adorable (laughs) like sometimes 
lay it on me. I just have <laughs> moments where I'm like, it is astonishing to me that men masturbate to me. Um, like, like I can't. And then sometimes <laughs> there's women who masturbate to me, and I'm just like, honey, stop. There's so much. <laughs> like, it's not okay. Why I? Why me? Um, no, I think that to myself all the time. I've been on set before, and the male talent will look at me and be like, girl, you're goofy. And I'm like... <laughs> I'm like, I'm so sorry. Do I reel that in or do, is it not attractive? Like, is this okay? <laughs> is it making your pee-pee soft? I'm sorry. Like, like, I'm sorry. My back is hunching more and more because I'm so uncomfortable right now. <laughs> I'm like, let me be ordinary. I'll just sit here and be quiet. I'm like, so no, smart. arch the other way. I'm like, I can't. <laughs> that is so funny yeah and i'm clumsy as hell the amount of times that i've fallen on a set and then i get shit for it so yeah i I don't get it either i've had someone tell me before they're like i used to love watching you and i can no longer watch you anymore and i was like oh no what happened what i do (laughs) he's like he's like i just feel like you know i know you a little too much now (laughs) i was like what does that mean i'm like (laughs) (laughs) you just know my personality too much you don't like it i I I just i just can't like even on set like (laughs) <laughs> the amount of times like i've almost just taken myself out with heels like i don't know what's wrong with me but i'm always like you know what i can put these on one at a time standing it's fine no <laughs> like, never never <laughs> all the time and everyone's like oh oh like is she gonna fall this They're time going with you. i'm bouncing around on one <laughs> stiletto it's like the fuck sit down i'm like i can't i gotta move that was the one thing in featuring that i was like i don't know if i can feature in these this heels t- I did switch. They're so big. I switched to boots for a little bit, like just yeah. a thicker kind of heel boot for a little bit. But this one manager was watching me walk, and I told her, like, girl, don't judge me. I swear I'm not drunk. Because I'd like, you know, I like to drink when I'm feature dancing. And she was like, okay, whatever you say, you know. I, yeah. but I was like, I swear I'm not yeah, drunk. This is how I always I'm just, walk in these. I can't. <laughs> so I thought I was doing good. I'm trying to be confident. I was walking to the elevator, and I fucking, <laughs> and I come back up, and she goes, yeah, I saw that. Yeah. I agree. You should definitely stick to boots. <laughs> yeah. I was on stage and I was giving this guy a quick little lap dance, had the heels on. I put my knee on one side of him, you know? Yeah. This is on stage, too. This is my worst fear is, like, oh, no. biffing it on stage. Yeah. And my ankle rolled out of the heel. And so it's, like, the, you know, oh, on the side. No. Thank God I'm behind the chair. So yeah, hopefully no one sees like, it. Hold on. And he's, like, kind of, you know, dancing yeah. with me. So I whispered in his ear and I was, like, let go of my leg. Like, very soon. <laughs> And he got real. He was like, "Ooh, my hands are off." And I was like, "I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to be." I'm so sorry, but like, also get the fuck off of me. Like, I can't. (laughs) Let the fuck go of me right now. (laughs) I acted all crazy. I was like, "Oops, sorry." But then I picked it back up, and it was fine. And every time, I'm like, "I don't like doing this for that reason." So uh, sorry to audio listeners who just elbowed my microphone. (laughs) I'm like, get it close to your face, but also like punch it, like beat it like it owes you money. (laughs) Never mind. Have you had like? <laughs> <laughs> were you like um, weird as a kid? Like were you? <laughs> yeah. like, I've been weird like my I whole life. <laughs> I've been very, very weird my whole life. So I was standing that. out. You like to stand out in the rain. Can I? Not, please tell me I'm not the only one who likes to stand out in the rain. Okay, so <laughs> I had a meeting the other day, and we were getting coffee, and it was raining outside, and I was just looking out the window like, damn. <laughs> I really wish I could just like go outside. You're like, can we put this on pause really I literally, quick? <laughs> I literally looked out the window. I was just like, oh, it's so hot outside. That rain would be, feel so good. Like, I just want to go stand out there just like for a minute. But I had to do adult stuff. <laughs> so. I got doing my adulting things and I was with my uh, adult friends. In the, I, I was standing in the rain because I told yeah. them that. I was like, well, I know I was about to leave your house. But now I'm going to stand right here until this rain stops. Because <laughs> like, it's going to be quick. <laughs> I know. Like, it's Vegas. It's going to be <laughs> So they came and joined me, which was very sweet of them. But then they looked at me and they were like, you were one of those kids who uh, always played in the rain, huh? Yeah. <laughs> like, yes, Dude, I'm a I used outside. to, like, rollerblade in the rain, which is not safe. Like, <laughs> I would swim in the rain. And yeah. And we, we would always, my dad would be like, hey, as long as you don't see lightning. Yeah. Like, <laughs> once you see the lightning, get out. <laughs> yeah. And then they just go inside. They're just like, <laughs> they're like all right, good luck. I trust their judgment. <laughs> <laughs> I trust this child's judgment. <laughs> <laughs> to know when she's safe at this moment in time, yeah. Like, <laughs> like no one. <laughs> like, okay, my homeschooling had a lot to do with it, but I was even weird for, like, the minute amount of time that I was in school. <laughs> like, I was not popular. <laughs> no, same. Like, okay, I remember, like, I used to, there was this place on the playground, and... <laughs> 
it was like a shed for the gardener mm. and we used to like build forts like on where the chain link fence was in between like the shed and we would build forts and bridge to terabithia was a big with me at the time and i like convinced like a bunch of people <laughs> that it was real i'm dead she's like follow me i know where it's, <laughs> it's like bro <laughs> like I, I don't know i was just always so weird like that like just making up adventures that didn't exist it got me in trouble like so many times i love that you say that though because sometimes with the things we do now i'm like i literally was destined to do this my whole life like i would fake play you know a waitress as a kid now yeah. i fake play waitresses all the time i would mm-hmm. fake play doctor i would fake play house with my sister you know mm-hmm. what i mean and now i'm like wow <laughs> yeah instead now i record it yeah <laughs> it's difference. like i i and it was probably might sound weird in context but like i used to write books for the kids that i would babysit for like like books i yeah. mean that like short stories and like illustrate them because i like to draw it's like i've always just kind of like done that yeah. and i was awkward enough to get thrust into this career this, where yeah. i had to learn it's like swim or die bitch yeah <laughs> like here people, we go people in the theory will be like you were one of those kids who always knew how to entertain yourself right and i was like yes yeah. most definitely that's why i feel like we're good at this <laughs> because yes. we can just entertain ourselves <laughs> just have like long conversations with myself in my room like i don't know <laughs> <laughs> yeah, literally that's why I like dogs. Like, I always had I talk pets. I to my cat all the time. It's like, maybe I'm crazy. <laughs> my cat Probably. is my best friend, 100%. <laughs> we are also very alike. Let me t- <laughs> I talk to my dogs like they're people. I'm yeah. just like, like, you don't under, even, even understand. Like, I'll give them, like, long admonishing <laughs> rants. Admiration. Like, when they're fucking around. <laughs> like, I'm just like, listen here. And just sit down and look at me when I'm fucking talking to you. Because we need to get shit straight right now. All right? You're, this business, this attitude... It's not okay. <laughs> like, like, they don't fucking know. <laughs> you need to change. I don't like your tone. <laughs> <laughs> but it just calms me down. I yeah. Like yeah. So. Just, like there I go again, entertaining them. myself. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah same. Like, oh my fucking God. <laughs> We're lovely. We're lovely people. I'm just, <laughs> I like being goofy, though. People say it but all the time. It's way more fun. I guess like, it's a personality. It's, I, I just feel like it's it's more fun. because. And also, if you have the ability to entertain yourself, then it's easy, I feel like, more so. Or not necessarily easy, but it is easier to entertain other people, especially when you don't see them face to face, which is how it mostly starts off. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Eventually when you do stuff like featuring, you do get to see it in person. But like, I'm sure even to work up to that point, cause it was something last year that you were just thinking about doing. I it's like talk myself up to that even. Yeah, I mean, I know exactly. Sometimes I try to forget or I don't try to forget, but I forget that everyone gets shy, you know? And mm-hmm. I'm like, I don't like, I don't like to call myself shy necessarily, but I'm just awkward sometimes. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I always have to remember like, you have to kind of talk, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yes. And it's always a yes. And yeah. it doesn't just apply to acting. It applies to like conversation. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it, it's hard to put yourself in that, especially if you are someone who's more used to entertaining yourself. And then it's kind of like, well, you end up moving up along this line. And I feel like this industry kind of like moves you along very quickly because mm-hmm. it's like, if you do reach a place where people know who you are, it's like, well then it's already begun mm-hmm. and it has to continue. Oh, and yeah. so it's like, there's at once you reach a point where people know who you are and you continue to move forward with that, it's like, well, there's no coming back from that. So then it's always going to be a push and to figure out how to not entertain only myself, but like a bigger audience of people. It is interesting though, because the goofiness that we have in that personality ends mm-hmm. up being like what they call our brand. Yeah. And so a lot <laughs> of people will like know me. And that's what's so funny about you asking like, are you goofy too? Because I was on OnlyFans and I fucked up on OnlyFans once and I was like, oops, sorry guys. Like... I'm so, so sorry. And I had to clean it up and stuff. And they're like, oh, it's fine. You know, it wouldn't be a Katie Kush live without a little oopsie. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, thank God I'm known for yeah. being weird because now yeah. I can just fuck up all the time. <laughs> no, and it, and it's great because it's like, and they don't like the, you know, they come for the tits. They stay for the personality. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? It's, it's that kind of thing where it's like if you really are just genuine in your interaction and you're genuine in what you're basically bringing to your audience then that then that shines through and that's what that's what they love and that's what keeps them coming back and we appreciate that so to anyone who listens and does support we do appreciate that like so very much because it does give us the freedom to kind of like on some level still kind of have that bit of introverted extrovertedness Mm -hmm. which is kind of like 
a really nice space to be when everything else is kind of like overwhelming. You can kind of step back and, you know, just have that fan base, which is really, really cool because it gives you space to fuck up. Right. Like, and it humanizes you in a way, which is more than you get from like only shooting mainstream porn or only doing like one avenue. Yeah. I think it's also interesting because coming as like kids who are, you know, I wasn't the popular kid. I was sometimes bullied and shit like that. It's interesting now because I went from the amount of, just like you said, how quick that my confidence was built by being in this industry for the last four years is like crazy because I used to not have this confidence at all. I used to not be bold to talk out and like, you know, want to engage with other people and yeah. be out all the time and do all these things with people. So it is like, it is crazy because I, I, I used to call myself shy and mm-hmm. now I can't really, like you said, introverted, extroverted. Sometimes I am shy. I'll run out of energy. But like yeah. when I have that energy back, I come back full blazing. Yeah. So yeah. I think everybody needs that, that recharge point. And, and I've said this before, like I get, I get nerves before every podcast, like right before I turn on the cameras, it's like my hands are sweaty. <laughs> and, but that's how I know that I'm doing something that is good for me. Because it's like, you know, even if this is never a big thing, you know, whatever, I just do it for me constantly because it forces me to talk. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's kind of like, it, it does, it, it does push the boundaries. And I feel that way, like going into shoots, even if it's people I've shot with before, I'm just like, it's like the nerves, mm-hmm. but it's also like excitement. Yeah. And they're basically the same thing. I always don't want to let people down is how I feel too. I'm like when I'm about to do these things, yeah, I'm like, I what I if do I, a good job. Yeah, I'm like, what if I go out there and everyone's like, well, that was sucked. Well, yeah. well that was boring. Well, that was, I'm like, I don't want to be that way. What can yeah. I do next to be not boring? <laughs> yeah. But I think another thing also mm. is like when you do, you know, start to, you know, be able to kind of be a bit more extroverted, even if it wasn't like your inclination or like how you used to be, because I've become that way too, because it kind of forces you to be, Mm -hmm. you know, so it's like, I do get my burnout, I get my nerves with new people, with old people, especially with party situations. Mm -hmm. I could just not do parties and it could be totally (laughs) cool. Like, but one of the cool things I've discovered about the industry is that I feel like a lot of the people who are in it are kind of awkward Mm -hmm. or shy or weird Mm -hmm. which is cool (laughs) because it's kind of like you know a group of people and this isn't everyone but I feel like for you know the more I get to and have gotten to know people the past couple years is like well yeah we are all a lot more alike Mm -hmm. than just like what we do (laughs) yeah for a job and whether it's like you know shared trauma or you were bullied or you you know really you were a nerd before it was cool to be a nerd or (laughs) you know whatever it is You know, everybody kind of connects on that, you know, little bit of already being outcasts. Mm -hmm. So what's being outcasts a little bit more (laughs) at this point? Pretty much. I mean, this, this industry definitely throws you into that outcast, like type of feel, but the more people that you meet in this industry, for for sure, the more it like makes you feel like you found like your, your side. I mean, everything has its pros and cons, but being in this industry, I'm like, damn, yeah, I really feel like I actually found where I fit in a little bit. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I've never felt so passionate even if I get burnt out at some point I'm always like but I freaking love doing this at the yeah, same time but I'm always ready to bounce back yeah exactly yeah this job's interesting that's very interesting if like yeah. how quickly I've changed as a person watching yourself grow yeah even from the last year so yeah no it's it's crazy like you know I I would have never thought that this would be you know a job that I had if you would have told me when I was like a teenager like because I was so shy like <laughs> But it was like, I I wasn't shy about, like, I think a lot of my social anxiety changed from, like, basically a very long period with my ex where I didn't see a lot of other people, so I ended up all being online stuff. But when I was a teenager, like, I wasn't shy. I was more, like, um, shy of my body, mm-hmm. for sure. Like, but not in social situations. Like, I always did feel more like I was, you know, always the one trying to make people laugh or you know, just kind of being the leader of like, let's go do this, mm-hmm. you know, thing. This is the, the adventure I want to go on, or this is the thing I want to do. And I feel like I lost a lot of that in my last relationship. So it was kind of cool to be able to start getting back to that. And I think it's just like the, the nerves and the social anxiety are the hardest things to try to like get rid of. Cause it's like, I know where I want to be and where I feel like I could be eventually, but it's just like a long process. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, it's crazy how our minds I was thinking about that actually just before coming here, how 
mean our minds are i know people say it all the time but really how mean our minds are to ourselves because yeah. on one hand you're like i know i can do this i know this is where i want to be and like the side i want to be on but then for whatever reason the other side of our brain is like mm. but actually it's still scary yeah. <laughs> but actually no well <clears throat> did you ever have a situation where you basically like did you get like a lot of praise as a kid or was it like where you're expected to do like, what was your childhood kind of like in that regard? Or is that not something that, like... <laughs> I'm just curious because I, I know how mine was, so I can, like, relay, you know, um, that as well. My childhood was very interesting. My childhood, like, I grew up in a mom and dad separate type thing, and it was very different lives from one each other. My dad was a very strict, don't, you don't go to sleepovers, you're at the house, you know, we're doing work at the house, we're te- mm. learning you work at we're teaching you work ethic, how to, you know, like be a human, become an adult, you're to be seen and not heard was my dad's favorite thing. And I feel like that's always what gave me my like, what didn't make me confident to talk out loud. And like, sometimes is what does make it hard for me to relate to people because I'm like, am I supposed to be talking right now? Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and then my mom was the other side of like, fucking <laughs> almost free for all, you know, mm-hmm. like, we lived in an a complex where we were a very very close neighborhood they always had weekend parties you know the mm-hmm. parents are getting drunk the kids are like <laughs> fucking coming up with dances to show them while they're drunk and yeah. doing my mom likes to tell people that she's very redneck my life was with her <laughs> but my dad it was a completely different so different very strict I was working with him in the garage he was yeah. like building things and I was learning how to weld and like you just tools and just stuff like that um But it's interesting because even my dad will hear me talk. He's met some of the people in the industry. Mm -hmm. Also, very crazy thought he would have been the one to disown me. The most supportive person in my life. That's fantastic. Um, But he even said it to me when I was, like, being witty with my friends. Because I just like to be a sassy bitch sometimes. He was like, kid, where'd you get that from? (laughs) Wow, you're fucking funny. I was like, like, well, dad. (laughs) Yeah. I'm being my true authentic self now. <laughs> I was like, you used to not let me talk, but, but now I I'm mean, allowed. You know. Also, I can't get in trouble for the things I can I say now. There was that whole period where you couldn't have remembered how funny I was because yeah. I was silent. So. Because I wasn't allowed to be. Because yeah. oh, you were like, nah. He, exactly. He'll also always be like, where did you get these daddy issues from? Like, it's definitely not me. And then I'll like think back on the stories that I have of him. And I'm like, mm-hmm, love you, dad. But there could be. But I mean. <laughs> there could be some reasons there. But I mean. I just blocked a lot of that. Yeah. Out. And I, I always, it is an interesting topic that I do struggle with, I think, as an adult, because he is so supportive now as an adult. And it's like now, it was always, I'm your father, not your friend as a child. Mm-hmm. And now that I'm an adult, it's like he wants to flip it to best friend supportive. You know, I'm always there for you. And so sometimes, I get mad at myself because I want to be mad at him sometimes. Yeah. Some things, there's things I also want to be mad at with my mom, but I'm like, I also don't want to ruin the relationship of what we're building now. Mm-hmm. And so that's always something that I struggle with because I'm like, you did some things that you probably shouldn't have done to me as a kid, but yeah. now you're so nice. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's like, I, I also feel like there, I know this probably makes me sound super old, but you might feel this way. It's kind of like, I feel like parenting has also changed a lot, even from when we were kids. And I feel like there's a lot of instances now where parents can look at this because I kind of get this with my dad. My dad wasn't, you know, whatever, but he's definitely more invested Mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I think it's just... They, they start to feel like, oh, I could have done this stuff differently then. So 100%. because it's hard, because they're just <laughs> old to admit different things. I think they do know, start to realize, like you're they saying. They want to too. just make up yeah. for it. And so at that point, it is, it's hard to like, let go. Like, like, I don't really talk to my mom and it's kind of like, I just let it go. I'm not like mad about it. Mm-hmm. I'm just like, all right, this this is what it is. You know what I mean? And I feel like that that it is part of the growing up thing is just realizing that like your worth and your happiness isn't really dependent on them yeah. because you you made it without yeah. them. Yeah. But you also did make it with them because they brought you to the point that you 
you know, attained that happiness in one way or another. Right. And I definitely wouldn't be who I am without the lessons that they taught me. And the way that I was raised definitely makes me like who the person I am. So I don't know if I'd ever want to change it. And it's also interesting. Like, I think I've said it to someone too. It's always interesting when your parents start to apologize to you when you're an adult too. Because like you said, I feel like they start to think back like, oof, (laughs) I mean, that was a little much. Sometimes they do. Sometimes Ooh, yeah. they never do. Some some don't realize. I think my dad definitely, I give my dad a lot of praise. And that's where it is easier for me sometimes to like try and move on and let it go. Because he's one of the only people I've seen change so much in my life. And yeah. like actually, but you have to want to. Yeah. In you order do have to. to want to. Like, it's like, um, you know, I get people asking me about like the fitness stuff. Like, how did you? I'm like, because you, I changed everything. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not... Like, the the biggest thing with, like, any big change or, like, you know, new life move or whatever is that you have to be fully invested in wanting to make that change, mm-hmm. whatever it is. And it's, like, you can't just half-ass it or you won't do it. May, it may take baby steps. Yeah. But you got to be fully in it. And your mind has to be fully in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's very yeah. interesting. Adult, being an adult is weird. Growing yeah. up is weird. Growing up is weird. Like, I never <laughs> thought when I was a kid, like, I thought my biggest problem would be, like, how many <laughs> how many different degrees I was going to get <laughs> for all the different stupid jobs that I thought I was going to have at once. Like, ten <laughs> different jobs at once. Like, I don't know what I thought I was going to do. Oh, wait, I do that now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> but with no degrees. <laughs> but with no degrees. <laughs> you can make them up if you want. <laughs> you can make your own degrees. True that. I have a master's in baiting. I I did not expect to have a thousand jobs at once. I was not, <laughs> wasn't ready for this, by the way. Okay, so I guess I did fulfill my childhood dream. Yeah. It's like slightly different. <laughs> yeah, same, same, but different. <laughs> like, there you go. It's some close enough on the squiggly line there. But, but I also like... I, I had no idea of what that entailed. Yeah. So thank you, universe. Yeah. <laughs> like, Destiny. But I never thought about, like, when you're a kid, you don't have the capacity to even, like, think about all the bullshit that you are going to go through <laughs> to make you into the person that you are growing into. It's like you just, you have no real concept of, like, future or right. anything like that. Mine was, um, I just want to be an adult so that I don't have to listen to my parents' rules anymore. <laughs> it's way <clears throat> worse than that now. <laughs> I was like, I don't want kids. I want to be an adult. <coughs> I want to drive my car away I from here. I just want to drive. <laughs> I just want to be able to drive. <coughs> and never oh be God. near these rules again. Too many rules. And now you, may, like you now you have to discipline yourself. <laughs> <clears throat> what the fuck is up with that? Like, I thought I was just going to, like, have the easiest, like... Self-discipline's hard. <laughs> Self-discipline is so hard. Like... I don't listen well, let me tell you. <laughs> like, I... I'm, like, my own worst critic, but I'm mm. also like, hey, let's try 50 things at once that you're not good at and see if you can perfect them all in an afternoon. <laughs> like, let's <laughs> fucking do that. My favorite thing about what we do as our living, though, is I get to try all the hobbies if you want to. Yeah. I'm well, it's cool because they like to just, like, y'all, and I say they as the listeners, is you guys like to watch us do things. Yeah. And you guys apparently <laughs> like to watch us have conversations and listen to them. So that's really cool because then it's like, oh, you just wanted to be a part of the conversation, whatever that evolves to. Yeah. So it's like there really isn't any pressure on what it is that you're going to talk about. There's not like a specific ground rules for like, I'm not asking you about all of your porn achievements, which yeah. there are many because she's amazing. Oh, but thanks, it's man. like they already <laughs> they already know you, you know, in that way. And I feel like the fans really like to just get to experience how we actually are as people. As humans. Yeah. It's hard, let me tell you. I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's hard living. <laughs> Life is fun. <laughs> life is fun what's what's like the, what what's like something that you wouldn't believe about your life now if you were <laughs> if you <laughs> go all of it literally all of it literally i was the type it. of kid to where like my sister was sexy as a teenager and i was the one when my parents would tell me about it and be like don't be like this I'd be like oh, never you i could never do Same. that i'm like I'll never drink alcohol. I would never show my body like that. Are you even crazy? Oh my god! What a hoe! And now I'm like, oh yeah. fucking hoe! <laughs> I, <love it. laughs> I can't stop it. 
<laughs> me and my sister completely switched. She has yeah. two kids and a whole life. And I am like, the one doing, doing your thing now. <laughs> exactly. I was like, who would have thunk? Not my parents. Yeah. yeah. Not my parents. <laughs> that's definitely you not know, me. that trend that's going on when it's like, yeah. I wish I could be like the cool kids when they're like, yeah. show their kid. But sometimes I'm like, I should go dig up those pictures. Those yeah. nerdy, nerdy, ugly girl <laughs> pictures. Yeah. And I don't post even know. Like, and I always had a camera. Like, I. That's the crazy thing. I didn't really think about that. But I always had a camera. Instead of a cell phone for my 13th birthday, I was like, I want a camera. I had a camera. I broke it within like six months. I I always had a camera. I was always taking photos. And then I look at the photos that I was taking of myself (laughs) and I'm like, girl. Isn't it crazy the photos we used to take? (laughs) And now the way people take photos, I'm like, what happened to being young? Like girls on TikTok, I'm like, when I was your age. Listen here, young lady. Yeah. <laughs> Listen here, young whippersnapper. Yeah. Now, when I was your age, yeah. I didn't know what I was doing with makeup. And they do their makeup better than I do. Oh, my now. God. The amount of times that I would go to school. My mom would let me go to school orange. Orange. And then I'd get in the car and she'd be like, girl, look at yourself in that mirror. Do you see how orange This is an important is? life lesson yeah. for you. Do you see you have Rudolph the Red Nose baby your nose? She'd like the, the camisole with the lace on the bottom and then you put a shirt on over that and remember when we were wearing leggings underneath our skirts <laughs> oh we had some uh, what were those yeah, uh, the leggings on are you like you cut the holes in them so you get like you know your little slits what were those capri pants that were flowy gauchos god <laughs> and we would wear those thick freaking flip-flops with them girl hideous <laughs> Dude. I am glad overalls are making a comeback, oh. though. Let me tell you, overalls should always stay a thing. I've never been stylish. <laughs> I would just like to say Me this. Either. But <laughs> when I was in high school, it was so much worse. Like, I had black hair at one point, like blackish purple, and it was like like real cut, real short. It was, oh, you had a bob. It was wild. I had a bob, too. It was not okay. Um, chokers. Um, I... <laughs> Like, how I dress was not okay. I had this big Calvin Klein black t-shirt that I don't know where it came from, but it showed up one day. It was like four (laughs) sizes too big for me. So I wore that and like these wide leg black sweatpants for like a month straight. The low riser jeans too. Did you ever have those? I'm going to show you a hairstyle. I have low rise jeans now, but I got my butt (laughs) too big and they don't fit me at the moment. Did you ever do that hairstyle where it was like really, really over bangs, yes. and then you do the poof, right? Yes, and we'd always very put a bow emo because right it's very emo. Why do we do those things? Why do we I do don't these? know. <laughs> like, <laughs> who told us that was ever? Okay? But you know what? I think it's fun because yeah, it's honestly, fun to go back to. I'm just I'm I'm goofy now. Like sometimes I feel I feel like um, my teenage self would hate me now. <laughs> Oh, I don't think my myself would like me much either. I'd be like, you're so fucking positive. Oh, I used to I be. I want to be angry. I went from listening to Evanescence. Did you ever do <laughs> the Evanescence? Did you ever? Did you ever have a religion in your life? Yeah. When you were a kid. Yeah. I was. I was a journaler. Christian journaler. Oh, like I didn't buy into it, no, but like I, I did for a minute. I did when I was real young until I was starting to be like, what do you mean everyone's born with sin? What <laughs> happens when babies die? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, what do you mean? Do they go to hell? <laughs> like, <laughs> but you Christian journaled. I was a avid, I was such a good girl. I would mm. journal in my book and then. My stepdad has ruined it for me, actually, because he was one of the people, you know, that use religion as anytime I do wrong, God forgave, no mm. matter what that, that wrong was. Yeah. I was like, well, that's it. Scratch that. Religion's bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, my younger self. But then after that, I went on to the hating life phase and then went back to being positive. Does, does everyone go through a hating life phase as a teenager or, or like some teenagers just like chill with it? They're just like, yeah. I think I've held on to the hating <laughs> life, but I'm a little more positive about it. I fucking hate <laughs> most people. And I say that as someone who entertains people. Yeah, like, yeah. But it's it's not even like, oh, I hate most people that I interact with. It's like people I don't know. Mm-hmm. Like, Facts. just inconsiderate <laughs> people like, 
I know COVID is apparently not a thing anymore, but I really liked when people would like not breathe down your neck in a checkout aisle. Like, Airplanes. why are you standing close enough to smell what perfume I'm using, what my hair smells like? Why are you standing close enough to see the dandruff that I have from the <laughs> desert air? Why are you this close to me? Like, it's not, or like people, I don't know if you experience drivers in Vegas. <laughs> Yeah, they make me sick too, just but like that. what the fuck? They make me ill. They make me unwell just thinking instantly. about it. I'm just like... <laughs> instantly sick, yeah, same. Like... I, anytime I'm on the road, I'm instantly pissed. Instant. Like, what's with the people who do, like, this shit, weaving through traffic? You're not helping anyone. You're gonna cause an accident. I've seen someone do it cause an accident. You're not getting there any faster. And in fact, you may not arrive at all. You may... <laughs> You may be stuck right there. <laughs> like, traffic in Vegas is not bad. Vegas traffic is probably one of the worst. I hate it the worst. LA, you- even compared to LA, and they have so many cars. I hate LA traffic, but let me tell you, Vegas is worse. No. I just hate the way people drive here. They're I, it's so not, in like, their own but world. But I'm saying, like, the traffic jam is oh, not. No. I'm saying as far as, that's why I'm saying we shouldn't have crazy drivers here, because typically oh. the traffic flow it's fine. I think it makes it worse like, because they feel like they can race everywhere here. Yeah, it's super but annoying. But you either get that here or you get the slow people who don't remember that, you know, the very far right lane on the freeway is to merge onto. And then mm-hmm. you're like supposed to be getting on a freeway going faster, but you instead you're going 25 the whole time on the freeway. Yeah. I just can't say the way people drive. <laughs> I, it's ridiculous. I have like, I feel like maybe I am just getting old, but I have like no tolerance. People like, in an little, airport, little the, bullshit. The, the least amount of tolerance is when I have. I saw a guy at the airport <laughs> on my international travels who wasn't wearing his shoes and he had his like socks on his shoes. And then he was like, had his feet propped up on his shoes, like just bare feet, like just airing it out. Mm. And I'm like, you're disgusting. We're all miserable. Just be miserable with us. Don't make us like more miserable, miserable yeah. for your personal comfort, <laughs> can, can sir. We keep it a comfortable Who miserable. Who do you think you are? <laughs> yeah. Like I can't. Also, that's what I'm like. <laughs> if you're gonna do that in the airport, why aren't you wearing slide-ons? Because then it's like your shoes are already kind of half off already. Yeah, which is disgusting, by the way. If you're walking around like I, <sighs> I am wearing Vibrics in every airport, but I have to be wearing socks. I can't not. That's wear what I'm socks, saying. Yeah. I'm saying like not wearing socks doesn't make sense. I've done the slide things yeah. with socks with little grippies on them before because it's you know disgusting. Yeah, people <laughs> who take like... their shoes off and they have no socks on at all and it's just their bare feet in an airport freak me out. I'm like who? <laughs> what did they do to you? I'm like, like you don't feel the bacteria already just like crawling. is it not like what do you and also you're gonna get like athlete's foot they're gonna mm. be itchy like it's not and then do you just go home and walk around your floor yeah. at home and put that on your like it just grosses me out so and much the airport is not my favorite place i hate the airport <laughs> so much mm. It's the second time I've said that to you today. (laughs) And I made it clear that I fucking hate airports. Well, we do fucking hate airports. So (laughs) fuck airports for one. Like, we're not here for it. It's the worst way to travel. (laughs) The best, but also worst way to travel. (laughs) No, it's it's like, yes, the most efficient. But I just don't know why airports are so gross. Like, why are they so (laughs) disgusting? It doesn't have to be that way. It's just people. I think just people just, are so inconsiderate. Yeah, I feel so. we were talking about this before we started rolling, like how much more inconsiderate people have gotten yeah. since COVID. Very <laughs> like, um, I'm sorry, catered but... to me and <clears throat> I'm come first. I feel like that's where people are so used to like, because in COVID it was just them or maybe one significant other at the yeah. house and they're constantly <clears throat> caring for each other. And then they just expect the whole world to do that for them. Yeah, I'm just like... It. Oh, I'm like, who are you? You're so entitled. Look at these freaking pool people. <laughs> can, um, can you please clean out the basket? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you please? They sent me a text. Please know clean out me. the basket <laughs> midweek because this is a lot for me. They're here for like 30 minutes. It's not a long time. And I don't like, what am I paying for? Yeah. <laughs> if midweek I have to do your job. What do you mean? You pay them a nice penny too. So. Like, <laughs> I just like, saw the message and I was like, 
I felt like my dad or something. I was like, oh, listen here. Right, you listen here. You just not respond. <laughs> you just ignore. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> That's your answer. There's no answer. I was just <laughs> not going to reply. How do you handle that? Like, what? <laughs> What do you want to do? I'm sorry. Comment for her. I'm going to tell her how to respond. Tell me how to respond. <laughs> Send me your submissions to twndpodcast at gmail.com or leave your voice messages at anchor.fm slash twnd. What should I respond I'll let to you know my pool cleaning is. service? <laughs> winner will receive um, a thumbs up at the end of the day. A thumbs up. Like a attaboy. Good job, <laughs> sir, ma'am, whoever you may be. Apparently women listen to this, but not very many. <laughs> Hi to the women. We love you the most. Hello, I'm just women. kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Leave us more of your voicemails so we can hear your sexy voices. I like women voices. <laughs> I do. It's actually like, I love when people leave voicemails on the podcast because it's like, oh, yeah, I actually get to hear what some of you guys sound like. Because even some of you as fans, if you leave, you know, responses, I know who you are by based off our conversation on OnlyFans. So I'm like, oh, that's what you sound like. So it's, it's cool. And then it's like, I feel like it's way more interactive. The next step is seeing their faces. Put yeah. the name to the face. The voice to the face. A voice to the face. <laughs> That's always the weirdest part because you're like, never would have guessed that that voice is what went to your face. What's like, <laughs> what's like, okay, so speaking of weird, what's like, so, <laughs> what's some of like the weirdest like custom requests that you've had? Do you do much with like customs work or no? I do. I do sell customs a lot. I also, so the niche fetishes will always be the weirdest to me. My top two right now on the weirdest, the first one, sweet and simple, was I do Sex Panther too. So okay. People will text me. This person was like, I have an elephant impregnation fetish. So Wait. we're going to Wait a act. <laughs> yeah, it's just what it sounds like. <laughs> an elephant? elephant impregnation. We are going to act like we are elephants. We'll use our arms as trunks. And we'll make noises while I impregnate you as an elephant. Was can, this whole can you give message. me your elephant noise? Oh, dude, I wanted so bad. Like, let me tell you, <laughs> when this person messaged me, I was like, "Damn, thought I saw it at all. Saw it all. No, psh, <laughs> learned anything today." And then so I was like, just... "Yeah, we're gonna carry this on, and I'm gonna sound like an elephant. I can't say I don't know how to sound like an elephant. I don't know how to do it." <laughs> you see, <laughs> that was pretty good. That was pretty good actually. <laughs> I got I a mean do dolphin in there too, but so, I'm gonna save the audio <laughs> listener. You <laughs> play with it a little, but I was like, "Damn it!" I would have carried on that conversation if I could have done a, a mean elephant, but I couldn't. So I was like, uh, "We're just gonna skip that one." I ignored it for sure. So you're just like, "Fuck with your arms." I'm like, "How does?" First of all, I don't even know how an elephant impregnates one another, and I don't really want to learn that, so I'm okay with it. Thank I you. I just had a really weird image of like <laughs> <laughs> moving, oh, like on. an elephant trunk going into an elephant's butt. <laughs> Listen, oh, elephant Peggy. Oh God! <laughs> Let's not give them any ideas, please. <laughs> please, please, please. <laughs> it's weird enough. Anywho, moving on. Oh I'm not king shaming. No king shaming here. No king shaming, but fuck. <laughs> but also, I don't know why that came into my head. <laughs> Note to self, that's what I should have responded with. I would have been like, damn, but I'm into elephant pegging. How do you feel? Like I'm sorry. <laughs> like Anywho. you're the. <laughs> I'm so sorry, YouTube. I would never do anything oh, like God. that. Limited monetization. Yeah. <laughs> the second worst one, though, I'm not straying away from animal noises. No, I don't know what it, it is with the animal noises. The second worst one was someone's custom. This was the whole script. Start off in a full winter outfit. Yeah. Start stripping your winter outfit on, off, all of it, all of it, but leave on your shoes and socks. Uh. Because that's possible. Uh, okay. <laughs> so then you're. So, gonna... like, take it all off and then put the shoes and socks back on. <laughs> the only way to do that. <laughs> yeah, that's the only <laughs> Pretty way. Much. So, and then, like, snow suit, like, pants and stuff? I just found sweaters because I don't have. I live in Nevada. I have no snow winter yeah. uniform. <laughs> like... I was in, a, like, a sweater, a big fur coat, and yeah. pants, yeah. And then some Converse. And then after you're naked, but with shoes and socks on, walk around. Just walk around and act hypnotized. I'm acting hypnotized the whole time this is happening. And then, at some point, you're going to take your shoes off, take your socks off, stuff your socks in your mouth, lick your feet. After you're done licking your feet, get horny. That turned you on. Get horny and squirt everywhere. You know how much we love feet over here. <laughs> yeah. like. That whole front beginning, whoo, horny as hell, made me squirt. Squirt yeah. everywhere. Oh. After you're done squirting, 
Still act hypnotized. Act like a cow, a chicken, a sheep, a dog, a cat. And then... What is happening? I know. It lost me a long time ago. And then put on a doll outfit and walk off camera. I love that you remember all of this, too, because... Oh, I will remember. That's the weirdest fucking custom I've ever gotten in my life. I'm so sorry to whoever bought it for me. I love you, and thank um, you for buying it, because you paid a good amount for it. But. I'm just so confused. If you're listening right now, please write in. I just want to know. I want to like, know. Like, first of all, how did you get there? From? Yeah. yeah. Like, so it's it's like, because... So I feel like the main trend here, then, is hit the hypnotized part. Correct. But it's like, why so much? Yeah. <laughs> like, that's a lot. And it's all over the place, Um, like full winter outfit, but then you're squirting, but then you're acting like an animal. And (laughs) how did we get here? (laughs) What was this progression? Like, what happened to you? Did you get hypnotized? Like, what? Yeah. The (laughs) hypnotized are always the ones where I'm like, did you get hypnotized for you to want that? Yeah. Or did you see something? That's crazy. Is hypnotizing a real thing? I think people still do it, yeah, for, like, therapy. Have you, are you into documentaries? Yeah. So I've been obsessed with the Netflix documentaries, 24 okay. Faces of Bill something. Okay. They were using it. They were talking about how they use it a lot for, like, psychology patients. And they want to hypnotize you to hear your your sub-underconscious levels of some. Would you let someone hypnotize you? I don't think I believe in it. I don't believe in it either. I don't think I believe in it. I think, I feel like, especially if it's like, okay, it's beneficial to these people who need it. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's kind of just a way that they maybe feel able to take the information that they're given or to take the direction because they're like, oh, I'm not in control of this. Mm -hmm. Someone else is in control of this. So it gives them the ability to do it is kind of how I see it. And like a mind game, basically. Yeah, yeah, kind of like, you know, it is a form of therapy. I would assume yeah. that's kind of like, you know, here's a suggestion of how, because that's all that the hypnotization, if that were a thing, is basically is the power of suggestion, as mm. they say, or whatever. So it's kind of like maybe just more like guided, like talk therapy, mm-hmm. essentially, kind of yeah. like, I don't know. Yeah, I agree with that. I think I've heard of something like called the ketamine drip hypnosis type thing, which yeah, obviously makes sense because you're under a drug, though. That's yeah. how I get. The whole thing to me is I just don't know. For people who actually know how to relax their mind, mm-hmm. that typically to me would mean someone who doesn't have thoughts in their mind can maybe fall under hypnosis. But I'm just like, I feel like there's so much. When someone's trying to get me to fall asleep, I'm talking to myself too much. Yeah, I'm thinking meditating is yeah. really hard for yeah. me. So I'm like, you think you're going to control this? I can't <laughs> even control this. Like, what are you talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's interesting. Yeah, I don't know. Because I've, I've heard of people saying, like, you know, that they've had experiences with it or whatever. But I don't know. To me, I just, your mind tricks don't work on me. <laughs> <laughs> you can't control me. <laughs> I don't believe in your magic voodoo. <laughs> I don't believe in this. <laughs> you black magic paper. <laughs> <laughs> JK, JK. Oh, my God. Yeah. I don't know. So hmm. those were my weirdest ones. Always my thought process when I have a weird one is like, fucking what turned you on to that? What in your life? Because obviously yeah. everything in our lives that we're like turned into, someone had to show us. Yeah, I, fa- I find that to be one of the most interesting things about, you know, taking a step back even from camming or even from mainstream, like I haven't shot mainstream in so long, is kind of like, it definitely unlocks a lot of new like, oh, I didn't even know that that was a thing. Or like, <laughs> like was why so is vanilla. this a thing? And we can talk to them about yeah. it. And it's like, it's interesting. Thing, actually like the psychology behind a lot of it a hundred percent i was so vanilla before i got into this industry like it was mish only <laughs> just mish maybe a, mish. maybe a side like a, <laughs> a little, little, little side like thing. a little the <laughs> little spoon nesting yeah oh. <laughs> maybe a little butt action not butt inside i mean just like a little doggy doggy just type. a little doggy just doggy. a little do- doggy type but now i'm like Put rope around me. <laughs> like, hit me in the face with a brick. Like, what are we doing? <laughs> it literally beat my ass. <laughs> beat me up, spit in my mouth. <laughs> I was talking about it with someone yesterday. I was like, hmm, it's interesting mm-hmm. to look back on the fact that I love being just completely disrespected in the room. It's like, how did I get there? <laughs> yeah. Hmm, where does this come from? Do I need therapy? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know I do, so it's fine, but... <laughs> I'm a fucking weirdo. We've all been lot. there. <laughs> yeah, there is no on. shame in therapy. And I would like to say that for anybody listening. Yeah, like, I do especially think. because I know that I, I, 
let's be honest, I have a lot of like older generation of fans. I want to say that there's never a bad time to talk to somebody about your life. Agreed. Because <laughs> like, I know that it was like a stigmatized thing. Even when I was a kid, like growing up, like therapy was for if you're crazy, like, mm-hmm. and it's like, everyone's fucking crazy. <laughs> Everyone is crazy. You're crazy. I'm crazy. You're crazy. Yeah. Everyone is crazy in a different way. Mm-hmm. And it's just kind of like a matter of figuring out how to deal with it. And, you know, maybe you are someone who's worked through that stuff already, but it's because you've done the work to get through it. Mm-hmm. And needing help to work through stuff isn't a bad fucking thing. Ever. You know, That's it's just I that like it. I feel like people who, who haven't needed therapy are kind of people who had that good support system to walk mm-hmm. them through how to deal with with these feelings and how to deal with these situations or to be supportive when bad things happen. And some people didn't get that. Mm -hmm. And so it's not a bad thing to have somebody who is impartial and who just wants to help you be able to kind of talk out things that you weren't able to talk out when you should have and when you needed to. I mean, most of the time, I feel like a lot of time you're already like doing a lot of the time therapy is like you talk to your friends, like they're their therapist, but they're just going to, egg on what you want you know Mm -hmm. so it's not a bad thing to just go find an outside party Mm -hmm. who has no you know like real thought they're not going to be biased on your side because they're not your friend and and also like there's there's a thing too with friends where it's like if I've had this too with past friendships where it's like I'm, I'm one of those very brutally honest people so and it's and it's hard for me to get to that point but sometimes I feel like if I'm close enough with someone I can be like hey like this is not like conducive for what's happening or I'm able to be very honest with them. Mm -hmm. Some people don't like that. Yeah. So it's like, oftentimes I feel like friends won't be fully honest with you Mm -hmm. because it's like, they don't want to hurt you. They don't want to make you feel threatened and push you away. Yeah. So if you really want someone who is impartial and you didn't get what you needed from your parents either, then, you know, like, Hey, not, it's not shameful to say it's that. Not, not a lot of us got what we needed from our parents. And that's okay. Because they didn't, didn't know okay. what they were doing either. They didn't know. <laughs> that's the thing. It's like, there's no hate there. It's like, they didn't fucking know. Yeah. Like, most of the time they weren't prepared. And like, I, for instance, like even my parents had me so young. Like, they didn't know. What they, were, they didn't know. Right. They, they weren't prepared for it. And, you know, it wasn't like, and those times were so different too. So it's like, there's not hate there. But there's also no shame in then being like, well, if they didn't know how to deal with it then... I'm not going to come to them with it now. I'm going to yeah. go to somebody whose who basically know. job it is and who's, uh, who has the ability yeah. to kind of just help walk you through the motions of figuring so, out yeah. who you are and why that happened. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, you can only think so much in your head. And our heads aren't yeah. always right. No. <laughs> no, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a lot of the time. I say this as someone who has had experience with therapy <laughs> and with thinking I knew everything. And, you know, it's kind of like... <laughs> I was not making good decisions for my life at all. And that was a very long period of that. And so it's like, yeah, that's a lot of stuff to undo. I still have issues. It's like, I went through therapy. I still have issues. Yeah. I might go back eventually, but like, I feel good (laughs) right now. So it's kind of like, you know, it's just, but it's that whole thing with therapy is kind of like teaching you to manage Mm -hmm. how you're feeling. It's not like you're never going to feel shitty again. You're never, you're not, you're not ever going to feel depressed again. No, it's just that once those feelings come, it's like, Oh, well, here's some tools that you've learned that you wish you had known before that, you you know, it's kind of gives you the ability to help you work through that. And eventually you don't, you know, need someone to kind of like be that, you know, crutch and talking post. That's my favorite thing. I think about being, the humans that we are and our everyday activities is like the observing of behaviors of people and the learning of psychology is like super fun for me Mm -hmm. my after my last relationship that ended it was always like my most important thing that I wanted to teach myself was not to let my emotions like control me Mm -hmm. and to always like and that's an everyday project in itself just like the managing of your feelings is basically what that is and so that's always my favorite thing about I don't know that internal like moving forward growth whatever it's called yeah. is like i don't know that's so fun for me to no and why and people do what they do why we it act is the way we it, act. It, it's so interesting and i feel like one of the cool things too and i may have said this before but more people listen now so listen up <laughs> like <laughs> what's cool about being able to go you know and have people subscribe to the platforms like they do which we appreciate is that also it gives them a space 
to feel safe with their, mm-hmm. you know, sexuality or whatever the proclivities are. Because a lot of the times, you know, and in most aspects of life, I sometimes forget this because I spend so much time around industry people. Is that half the time, like most of the things that I know or talk about, like when people ask about the job or whatever, they've never heard of before. Mm-hmm. And so you bring that into like a new relationship or or maybe you've tried to before and it's been like, like, Whoa, what the fuck is this, you know? Mm-hmm. And this can kind of give them a space to not feel judged for it. Yeah. They get to talk about why they like it. They get to talk about what brought them there and talking about things is helpful. Yeah. So it can be, I don't know, I wouldn't necessarily say therapeutic, but maybe kind of in a way to kind of like feel like you can have a release of something that you can't really get and that you can't find, you know, out in the big scary world. Cause it's a big, <laughs> big scary world. Yeah. It is. Yeah. And other people are more, and that's why I like this industry too. We're not really inclined to judge because we're already like so far past that, you know, that we're not really yeah. we're kind of like, well, we're here already. What you got? Yeah. Like it's surprise me. Desensitized to a lot of things. So what do you want to talk about? I'm an open book. Let's do it. Yeah. I do forget that all the time. Cause then I'll be with like I love that we call them civilian friends or whatever, but like someone who's not in the industry. I call them a little vanilla beans. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'll be having a conversation and they're like, why do I like, mm, I don't know if I'm uncomfortable. And I'm like, dude, I totally forget. I'm so sorry. Yeah. I'm also like, you know what I do? So either we need to get comfortable as friends now or let me know and maybe we can't yeah. talk much anymore. I mean, that's totally fine. She's <laughs> yeah. like, I, I get it. Like I'm a lot. Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. It's, forget. It's a lot. I forget sometimes. I'm like, it's, oh, yeah. it's that social awkwardness. And yeah. it's kind of like why it's nice to have the friends in the industry, but then also to have the friends outside the industry who are still like understanding enough to kind of like let us be ourselves, which yeah. is hard to find. Yeah. So, and it's also kind of like why, you know, working with the fan base is cool too, because a lot of you guys are socially awkward as well. And yeah. so it's kind of like we're, we're helping each other, <laughs> yeah. like maintain yeah. our awkwardness. I mean, it brings me back like. I don't want to call it reality, but it brings me back sometimes too, because I like it. Mm-hmm. It makes me calm down a little bit and yeah. not just be some off the wall, you know, like, like what everyone would call it a heathen or whatever, yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah, draw it in a little bit. Yeah, it makes really? you take a breath sometimes. Like, oh. I'm like, oh yeah, I forget. <laughs> yeah, I do. It's easy. It's easy to forget, like, because it's not like we're living in it all the time. Like we're sitting here, not naked, not eating yeah. each other out. Like not, we're not. <laughs> like, and it's just like real, real life. I mean, we want to be, of course, but what that's coming about? soon. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, I don't want you anywhere near me. <laughs> but so it is easy to forget. But then also, it's just like so part of our lexicon. Like the things that we talk about is so constant even because even here we talk about it mm-hmm. and it's not in a way that is sexual but it's sexual in nature and that's yeah. just our lives and that's our jobs yeah you know sometimes and it's hard forget, for people to <laughs> i forget we admit it sometimes i'm like sometimes i'm just sitting there doing nothing and somebody said something like <laughs> even if it's just um bitch face kind of like it's yeah. kind of along the same lines you just sit there and you think you're doing fine and then someone comes up to you and you're like why like, are you doing that or like why are you, <laughs> why okay? are you making that face and i'm like and i'm like yeah i'm fine what do you mean i was Didn't just like i zoned out they'll like, be like why are you flirting with me and i'm like am i oh, i'm so I'm, sorry <laughs> oh i was i was staring at the thing behind you <laughs> yeah, while i was just like dead-eyeing you zoning out into that <laughs> to the abyss sorry was i holding my titty like i just sorry because i'm massaging my it's comfortable for me dude i was partying at a, at a pool party and i put ice fun fact vegas hack for me i put ice in my bathing suit because mm, it keeps you cold you know nice but i forget and i'm smeared around and i also start like doing it on my body and i'm like everyone probably thinks i'm like off the fucking <laughs> They're like, what is she on? I want some of that. Is it Molly? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, yeah, it's probably not appropriate to me. You know, just rubbing my titties. <laughs> fuck it. It's Vegas. That's, what, that's one of the nice things about Vegas. It's like, well, it's Vegas. It's Vegas. <laughs> fuck it. <laughs> yeah, I was, yeah, I do that a lot. <laughs> mm. Well, um, where can they find you and your upcoming content and all the new, new that you're doing all the things upon? What are all the sites named? I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, my website is kushdrips.org with an S or merch is kushdripswithaz.com. Nice. You'll find me there. All the socials, Katie Kush, XX2, because, mm-hmm. you know, I've been deleted a few times. <laughs> You got to create those accounts again and again. I recently just got suspended, but I got that shit back. So it's back up. So it's back. back So go follow her. (laughs) And hopefully it's still, it'll stay. It's still up. I did create a backup. I'm so Instagram. Love you, Instagram. Love you, Instagram. But come on, man. Cut us a break. We're not doing anything. We're not hurting (laughs) nobody. We're just chilling here talking about 
sex. Normal right. life stuff, you know? Normal life stuff. <laughs> Every day. Every day. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for tuning in once again. Um, once again, please leave your voicemails at anchor.fm slash TWND and uh, TWNDpodcast at gmail.com for email submissions. If you're watching on YouTube, just leave a comment, help the algorithm, and subscribe and share with a friend. And I'll see you next week. Mm-hmm.